um, and In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, dear faithful in Christ. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday after a Pentecost. We read in the Epistle, St. Paul to the Galatians, where he describes that there are works of the flesh and that there are works of the Spirit. There are different works. One group uh, merits for eternity. The other brings uh, to hell. The other is uh, opposite to God and is opposing uh, what he wants to do with us. And when St. Paul writes of these works of the flesh, he makes clear that those works come from the concupiscence of the, of the eyes, of the flesh, and of the life, which brings a, for, a false curiosity, which brings the desire of uh, sensible things, and the pride of the life. This all works coming from uh, disordinate um, uh, passions of our life we are not able to control. And when we do this, we cannot expect, in St. Paul he lists several of these works of the flesh, we cannot expect to see God. Instead, when we do works of the Spirit, we bring forth fruit. And this fruit is, is most of all to, to bind to God. And then, in consequence, to uh, tie us to Him. When we do these works of the Spirit, we do principally nothing else than activating the graces we have received in the baptism. In the baptism we died to our flesh and we were reborn in the Spirit. And there the graces were infused, being able to do works of the Spirit. And when we do this work of Spirit, we are tied to God, we enjoy the contemplation of God, and we are uh, likewise pushed to works of charity, and we will have a perfect patronance, governance of ourself. And we listed several saints who made clear what they did to govern, to control perfectly their own body, mind and will. And this was, uh, this had then to the consequence that they were absolutely uh, um, disposed that God could work in them. And therefore those became gross, great saints because God in, in reality could do what he wants to do with everyone. Sanctification of oneself and uh, communicating this uh, love of God to the next. And this is also when we see it with the Gospel. We first and most of all must be occupied 
to restore the justice, justice of God. Justice of God, first in ourselves, in our family, and then in the society. And when we see the great saints, and we listed Saint, uh, Saint Ludwig, the saint of we commemorated today, he as king, Ludwig the Ninth, uh, king of France, he were more occupied to restore justice in his reign by doing charity to uh, in the hospitals than in futile, uh, useless talkings in the in the parliament or in the government and his reign his was was flourishing when we see we mentioned Gabriel Garza Moreno this uh, great man and and governor president of Ecuador he the first time when he was exiled to France, to Paris, he realized that also for his own country he must restore and establish any kind of order in, uh, in a Jesus Christ, in the doctrine of the Catholic Church. And in this way he was able in the shortest time, and we talk about 15 years to after after a country destroyed by the masonry in a horrible way to restore it in a perfect order and to make flourish everything from the from the church from the schools from the economy culture uh, science everything because he was first of all occupied to restore the justice of God in his country. And we, fortunately, there were many good and saintly authorities who knew, who knew that we have to first of all take care of the justice of God and everything will, will, uh, will be given uh, as a side effect. And this dear faithful, I wish you that you are able to understand that also we must have uh, faith in the divine providence and most of all be occupied for ourselves, for our family and then for society, restore the justice of God and everything else will be given to us. We see the whole, when we Consider Italy and his beauty of buildings, of, 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 of art, of music. We realize all those things were created because people were occupied for the justice of God. Occupying the whole time with God, everything else comes by itself. And then Gregory the Great. He reminds, after uh, hard labor of searching for God, they will contemplate and meditate his Creator. And I noted this because it's important to understand it is work, it takes time, it takes energy to study the truth and to acquire the truth. It's a knowledge. And then you have to practice it. And we have to do this fatigue. And this is my wish, dear faithful, that we understand and we follow the saint examples. We have so many. How much time they occupied for studying God. Today we are just uh, uh, fixed on material, futile things, on the work, 
on the hobby, on things which are today and tomorrow they are not anymore. They do, they do not have eternal existence. But we, most of all, for most, we must study and occupy our time studying God. Therefore, dear faithful, let us realize that we have to die our concupiscences of the flesh, of the body, uh, of the flesh, of the life, and of the eyes, so that we can bring forth fruits of the Spirit which ties us to God and makes us able to contemplate Him. And then we will ab be able to do not serve the richness, the mammon of the world, but to use those uh, material uh, things to practice virtue and most of all our charity. And this is just to not uh, distinguish, uh, confront, uh, uh, exchange a mean, the means with the with the uh, final objective. The final objective is God. The means are everything created in this world, and we should not become idolatrous, adoring the material things, the goods, the richness, the, our body, the work, and all those things. But we must use it for the glory of God and for living uh, Christian virtue and charity. Dear faithful, we were, we, we, were, we concluded that we celebrated on Thursday, the octave day of the Assumption of Our Lady, the Immaculate, Immaculate Heart of Our Blessed Lady. And this so beautiful, important feast, because when we talk about the Immaculate Heart of Mary, immediately we connect it with the Sacred Heart of Jesus, because in this Heart of Mary, there is inscribed Jesus. And this feast is surrounded by feasts of saints who all of them had a great devotion to our Blessed Lady. We had St. John Eudes, we had St. Bernard, the Marian doctor, as he is called. We had uh, Francis, uh, Fr uh, uh, Francisca de Chantal, and we had uh, Philippe uh, Benitus. All of them were great men, founded um, convents, monasteries, uh, reformed the education of the seminarians of the agnostic state. In one point, they were true sons and daughters of the Blessed Lady, and through her, infallibly, they came to Jesus. And this is my wish to you, dear faithful, on this last Sunday of August, the month dedicated to Our Lady, that you realize you must have a great devotion to her. And when we tire us, as says also Montfort in his book of the true devotion to the Blessed Virgin, and when we tire us to her as slaves, we will infallibly come to her son and we will bring forth fruit because we are able to receive the graces coming from God through Mary and we will be able to bring this great love that we will be able to restore the justice of God and God will work it in us and through us. So let us have a great devotion to our Blessed Lady. Let us carry the scapular. Let's do the total consecration. And most of all, let us pray regularly the Holy Rosary so that we are really in her and in her 
uh, with Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, blessed be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.